Sam. How are you? All right. How are you? Good. Good. Fantastic. Just going to admire your books for a moment. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. And uh, uh, it's been a while. Yeah. Since we talked. Well, whenever um, the last book came out. Oh, uh, over a year, well, maybe. Wait. So there's been a book since the since uh, since the the big goodbye. Yes, there was a book, the oral history of Hollywood, that I wrote oh, with Janine. Basinger. With Janine Bassinger. Yeah, I was going to yeah. ask you. Oh, oh, okay. I missed that one. Oh, that was that's too bad. I would love to have had you both on for that. I've been wanting to have her on. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, that would be She's an incredible. The She's What's the that? one. She's the one. She could speak about my book better than I could. Oh, no, I understand. I understand. I understand. Yeah, no, I mean, is she, but she, is she, 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 she can't be still like at, at Wesleyan, is she? No, she's not at Wesleyan. She's retired from there. No, she's yeah. retired. Yeah, right. yeah. But she's still alive and well? I mean, well, she's oh, alive, of course. She's alive and well. She is uh, She is the greatest uh, on this subject on the yeah. planet. Yeah, I know. I, I would have to figure that out, like... That would be kind of intimidating, right? To talk to her. Yes, but, it is intimidating. You should be intimidated. <laughs> exactly. Know your place. That's understand. the right response. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Understand the situation fully. Yeah. Don't go in. Yeah. Don't be naive about it. Um, well, talk to me. Like, so let's just let's just do a little name dropping. Uh, who I mean, this is a really uh, fascinating and freshly told story. It's, it's it's actually called a story as opposed mm -hmm. to a, a biography or something else because and it it does read like a story it reads like a movie um yeah. like you know it's yeah. it's fantastic and i uh, it's so entertaining and it, and um i learned so much that i did i thought i knew everything on coppola but you proved me wrong what did you learn Oh well, I guess one of the oh you're turning the tables here. I see what you I see what you did there. I don't want to put you on the spot. I just honest. That's question. okay. Yeah. That's okay. But no, I mean I just I, I think I just learned like about I mean, I guess it's been out there in to some degree, but maybe that he did grapple with Francis, you know, Frank Francis Copley, maybe he did grapple. First of all, the Ford dropping the Ford thing, can't trust a person with three names didn't really know that story but also like you know just um like maybe a real struggle with with yeah. some level of mental illness possibly yes. yes 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 that was a big part uh that i learned that i learned that too i learned that too um uh it had been alluded to in interviews right um, that i had read uh, of francis but um i'm i'm i guess i'd say i'm psychologically inclined um, and, um, uh, so I see that as a defining characteristic, you know, it's not just, um, a detail and, and it's been presented as a detail. I, 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 I find that hard to, um, hard to get next to, um, I, the way in is through the psychology. So that was formative for me and how I was going to approach this story, which is about um, um, ecstasy and catastrophe, which is what manic depression is. Yeah, yeah, uh, and it's it's finally at a point I think where we look at at a, a story like that and like or or you know a, um, a person like with like Coppola, and you know we're so past I think. At least the majority of us are so past that the the stigma of it that now. We oh can, yes, right. That's right. And so we can tell a story like this without that being something, you know. Like, um, but it's interesting because, you know, he was. I uh, we know he was untreated, right? He was yeah. un. 
Right, di- he probably was not diagnosed, right? No, know. not not until after Apocalypse. Yeah, um, is when he started the treatment and lith for lithi with lithium. Lithium, right? Yeah. Um. Anyway, it's just there's there's so much in here. Uh, so, but to, to tell me, start let's start to, by telling me maybe some of the folks that you 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 talk to, and how and and what that process is like because I have no idea. Like getting access, obviously you have at least um, four or five books behind you. That can't hurt yeah. to get you in the door. Right. Well, I ended up speaking to about 250 people. Um, wow. And um, one of them was Francis Ford Coppola. Um, one of them was Eleanor Coppola. Um, I did not speak to Lucas. Lucas was very hard to get to. Mm. And everyone that I tried to help me was just saying, you know, you'll make yourself crazy. Don't, really? Don't even try. And... Um, um, you know, that's all right. That's all right. It's not Lucas's story. Obviously, I would have liked it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't think the book suffers in any way because of it. Um, I reached out to Francis and I said, um, you know, I, I really want to position you, Francis, as n- not the director of The Godfather, but as the founder uh, and major creative force behind Zoetrope. I really saw that as the center of Francis's creative life. The Godfather, as we know, was an accident. Francis didn't want to do that. It was not a passion project. Um, He took it because he needed the money and lo and behold, made two masterpieces. But it was not what he was about. It's still not what he is about, I don't think. Um, obviously thematically what it's about, but the style of movie making is not native to him. Francis wants to be a maker of small personal movies and be um, a a leader um, in the movie business for other young film, for young filmmakers to do the very same. He wanted to recreate the system. And that's what Zoetrope is. He wanted it to be a utopia, not just a studio but a way of living and being together. Um, And knowing this, that Francis really is a, beyond a filmmaker, a utopian, um, I came to him with this information and he said, no, I'm done. I I don't wanna talk anymore, I'm done. Um, Good luck. Um, And I put the book aside and I wrote the big goodbye. and the Hollywood book, uh, Hollywood, the oral history. Um, But this thing still kept nagging at me. I felt it was too important. And so I wrote Francis and I said, Francis, you know, respectfully, I love you you too much to not (laughs) do this. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, eventually he came around with the, the endorsement of some people who were close to him saying, that I, I was doing a good job and I understood what he was about. And so Francis said, okay. And from that, it grew into total access, uh, not like, just the people, but the archival material, um, most of which no one has ever seen. Um, and that included, we were talking about his mental illness, uh, correspondence with physician, doctor, uh, um, doctors, physicians, and mental health professionals going all the way back to the 50s. Wow. Uh, so it was very intimate and having Eleanor there made it very intimate because it is also a book about marriage and love. Um, so and I family. Needed Eleanor, and family, of course. Right. And I spoke mm-hmm. to Sophia, obviously, and uh, Roman Coppola, uh, Francis's children. Um, so um, my access was total and voluminous. Once you have access to uh, the, you know, your subject, once you have the Coppola's, um, is it, is it, it's gotta be a lot easier, right. To find other people to. Yeah. You can interview now that, write, that we're close with that. We're in the orbit, you know, and then. And, you can now write in your letter of introduction, Francis endorses this project and they say, okay. Yeah. You know. Right. Does that That's have it? A lot of biographers like not to write the unauthorized book because then they're not beholden to their subject at all. Well, what, was I, that a, what was that conversation like? Right, exactly. Um, 
this is not authorized. It's not unauthorized. Um, I had Francis's endorsement no matter what I wrote. Okay. Um, and um, that's because Francis respects the writer and the creator. And um, Francis is not an ego. People get that wrong about Francis. They think because of his outsized spending, um, uh, he is an ego. And all, people also think that people in the movie business, especially directors, um, have an ego. Um, I think that's because people feel like it's such a coveted job um, that anyone who has that job would be smug. Um, but it's not, not the case. Um, um, if you're any good, you don't have an ego, in fact, because you have to see truth and um, see other people. It's part of being a good storyteller. Yeah. I mean, an ego is the thing that actually blocks your way of a pure vision, actually. Exactly. And then, exactly. uh, yeah. And but, although some might argue that you have to kind of be blustery and larger than life and all these things that we associate with ego in order, especially nowadays when so many projects for financial reasons are hinged on, you know, the casting. So, and then, so you, if you have a major star in your movie, the director has to make it clear who's in charge. So, you know, there's that, well, business. but maybe it was less of a situation. You have to be a leader. And, but maybe they also back in, in were, you know, in these, these years were kind of referencing uh, roughly from your big boy now through, you know, one from the heart, which is kind of the, right, the time frame of your book, more yeah, or less. that's the time frame of my book, right. That's why it's a story and not a life. I mean, the life is, uh, is um, the life, you know, Francis spent about 10 years paying his debts after the catastrophe of One from the Heart. And a lot of those movies are not from the heart and um, are not part of the zoetrope story because of it. I see what you mean. So it's a Francis Coppola story. Right. Not a life. Um, Gene Kelly, another thing I did not know. He asked yes. me before what I learned. I never knew this, that that he, you know, essentially, uh, I don't know if hired is the right word, right? But he, yeah. he did hire Gene Kelly. This was, you know, before One from the Heart, right? In the creation, in the pre-production of well, One from the Heart that he in wanted. creating the dream studio of Zoetrope, one of Francis's ideas is we are going to have artists in residence. And Gene Kelly was an artist in residence, as was Michael Powell, mm. as was John Another, Luke Goddard. Yeah. Um, and they were paid to advise and develop their own projects. Amazing. And of course, one from the heart was a musical, so Kelly was there. I had no idea. Yeah. He he might even I mean I see I saw it many years ago, and I don't maybe I wasn't looking closely at the credits. He's got to be in there. Gene in Kelly. One from, in, yeah. He's in the credits. Yeah. 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 <laughs> How many yeah. times are we? Do you do you see everything over again? I guess you got to see everything, and you know, you know, you don't. It's not so much about watching the movies over and over again mm -hmm. um, because you're telling the story of a life. It's less critical um, a, 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 from an artistic point of view. Critical as in terms of critic, I mean, right? Not judgmental. Um, um, some biographers choose to have more criticism in their uh, uh, work. Um, Peter Cowie, uh, who wrote a very nice biography of Coppola, um, oh God, 30 years ago. Yeah. He, he is- Kind of takes them apart. He goes, he, he will do extended writing on the work. Um, that's not my inclination. I really want to focus on the story of the man. Right, right. So tell me about the these in, the these interviews with 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 Francis Ford Coppola. Like, uh, how many hours or how many days, and where were you? And I'm kind of trying to set the scene, if you will. All over, I went up to yeah. Napa, um, and, and spoke with Francis in his library in his office. We spoke on the phone. We spoke by Zoom. We we emailed. I flew down to Atlanta where he was shooting Megalopolis. Um, all over. Um, um, 
you know, one of the things you're mindful of is to not waste somebody's time who's been interviewed. You don't want to lose that credibility of asking them questions they've already been answered before. So if I walked in there and I said, Francis, what was it like directing The Godfather? He'd roll his eyes. Yeah. You know? Sure. So I, it's not about the time spent, um, which is to say, I didn't spend hours and hours with Fran, you know, I spent, I did spend a lot of time with Francis, but it was not, we, you know, it was not months, you know, it was not months. So, so in other words, you did a lot of due diligence in order to avoid those uh, boring questions, right? But he's, but he's still, um, he still has to be patient and still interested in telling his own story, right? He still has to be willing to go over old, you know, um, chapters of his life and 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 the painful parts and the right. I mean, the stuff he's talked about probably many many times. He still he still kind of has to approach it with the like a, a sense of um, uh, being available and accessible to you, right? For he was accessible to every question. I mean, he was an ideal collaborator in that in that sense. He never said, I'm not going to talk about it. He never said, I've talked about this before. He was very respectful. And and I, I think it's because I was respectful of his his time. I mean, I'd, I'd really only go with him uh, with a question I needed to know the answer to, as opposed to being merely curious. Got it. Um, and um, uh, he wanted me to get it right. He wanted me to get it right. He respects history. A lot of people don't respect history. Is that right? And yeah, they don't. Is that care. what you run into as a as a film well, journalist I, and author? I I think a lot of people, especially in the movie business, think that history is another fancy way of saying gossip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and um, they have good reason to think that a lot of books that claim to be history really are gossip. And um, especially in the movie business are interested in bad behavior. Right, sure. Right. Um, and um, one of the reasons Francis was disinclined to talk to me was because he was so hurt by Peter Biskin's book, um, Easy, Easy Riders. Riders? Well, yeah. yeah, Easy Riders, which is very much, um, that way. Now, very well researched. I mean, Peter Biskin does a ton of research and he is no dope, um, but his orientation is skewed towards the negative. And Francis um, really felt that um, Peter got a lot wrong in the sense mm. of presenting one side of the story. So he was burned. And um, that's why I didn't want to talk to me. One of the reasons. And, and so in talking to me, um, really wanted to get it right, to set the record straight. And as peer as you do, I mean, this is a very um, judiciously told story that you you you, you wrote. Um, it's not, I mean, while it's fascinating, often funny, I mean, I just pulled a line, which I thought was great. Uh, someone wheels in an, like, you know, an ancient fossil of King Fedor, King Vidor into the room and and Francis is like, you know, let's find a project for <laughs> with this guy because he was so um, obviously, uh, you know, like in love with with these guys. You know, this he, right. he it's, it's a such a deep respect. He, he yes. can you imagine like bringing this guy out and trying to find a project for him? You know, and he could barely see King Vidar. Right. He could right. walk and he could barely see, but Francis was still dreaming the dream for him. I mean, that is, it's I'm beautiful. so glad you picked that out, Adam. Yeah. It's beautiful, and that that tells you exactly who this guy who this guy is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just, yeah. And the fact that Michael Powell also by then probably an elder statesman, right? Yep. yep. When he came in, um, yep. just amazing story. So talk a little bit about also, uh, because the, the way this is, the, the is structured, it's not linear necessarily. Uh, it's, it's, um, not necessarily told in a chronological way, although there are, you know, certainly whole portions that, that are pretty, pretty you know traditionally structured but overall i'd say you kind of approach it very differently so i was just wondering like what thought went into that well i wanted to um i wanted to announce to the reader right away that this wasn't going to be a cradle to the grave uh -huh. 
autobiography. Um, and we weren't going to be Francis Ford Coppola was born, you know. Right. Um, and I wanted to, I wanted to um, put it inside. I wanted to flash back um, because I also wanted the reader to have a sense of this coming from Francis's lived experience in the present. And and that sounds strange when you say you want a flashback, but I wanted to I wanted to give you a how can I put this? Um, I wanted to show you what was on the line um, immediately and what was in Francis's mind and show you that the whole story of his life was was a part of him wherever he went. Um, and in the jungle, most urgently in Apocalypse Now. So, and I also wanted to show a breakdown. And when you break down, um, you're you're flashing back. Mm. Um, you're <laughs> you're you're not totally in the present. You're scattered. Um, I I wanted to create some kind of a sense of a a psychological analog to that frame of mind. In the now that and he's in production of Megalopolis, correct? Mm -hmm. Post production. And, what's that? Post production. Oh, he's now in post production. That's good news. Yeah. Uh, and he still approaches this with the same ideals that he yes. w when he founded the Zotrope, American Zotrope. Yes. So absolutely amazing, amazing. Yeah. And should be said, Francis spent a hundred and forty of his own millions. To make this movie his own yeah. million right i mean if he wanted to make could he do anything else at this point you mean if you want to make it you know the, the the well hollywood has left him i mean i don't know well i think they left each other i think they left each other fair enough um, um francis could do whatever he wants you know he's got the fuck you money he sold he sold the winery made a i think about a billion dollars oh my god um which is at least double the amount of money I have. At and least. about two or three times more than I have. Um, so um, and so Francis can do whatever he wants. I think this is going to be his last movie. He said that. Um, it feels like a last movie. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, whether it fails or succeeds, I don't think it matters to him. It's a statement he wants to make. Which is exactly the way he talked about making films back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Right? He has an attitude towards money that we should all have. Um, which is, um, I can make more of it. I'm not going to let the want of this or the fear of this thing stop me from living the life I want to live and doing the work I want to do. If I run out of money, I'll make more. I'll find a way to make more money. Mm -hmm. um, and we should all think that way. And that is also coming from a guy who not only went through patches of having no money, <laughs> yeah. but but of yeah. owing quite a lot of money. And I should say, this is not a rich kid. This is not a guy who, he's no. a guy who made all of his money. He came from a middle class background in Great Neck, Long Island, and made all of his money. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's that's because he's a genius, a great producer, and America works. Mm -hmm. It's called The Path to Paradise, a Francis Ford Coppola story. It's written by Sam Wasson. It's published by Harper Collins. Did you do the uh, audiobook? I didn't do the audiobook. I, I, I like that. your voice, man. I, I wish. Thank you. But it's, I was thinking, my God, the, the amount of work you'd have to do. I hope you, you know, if you were to do all that, I mean, that's just after writing it, then you got to read it. In, exactly. Perfectly. And it's scary to read it. You know, yeah. you think, oh, fuck, I shouldn't have said that. What? I forgot about this. You, you see everything you did wrong. So it's scary to go in there. Oh, I see. I did it, I did it for the path to paradise because I needed, someone needed to do it in a pinch. But, what, what uh, did what? I did the audio book. I, I'm sorry, not the path to Paris. I did it for the big, big goodbye. Big goodbye, rather. Big yeah. goodbye. Yeah. Okay. I did it for the big goodbye. Yes. Okay, that yeah. makes. And and so and you and after that, a little PTSD, maybe. You, yes. Like, yes. You know. 
And, and okay, so you you do have a track record. You probably have a following. Um, uh, well, you do. Uh, but are these books still like how much hard, how hard like it is for Coppola to make a movie? How hard is it to publish a movie book? You know, like um about a filmmaker from the seventies. I mean, he still obviously was making big movies through the eighties into the nineties, but, uh, how, how, how challenging is that? You mean to get a deal? Yeah. I mean, is this still, you know, I, I mean, there are a lot of people like myself who can't wait for your books, but you know, you. yeah, no, I mean, obviously. Um, and, uh, I, I just, I just wonder what, it, if, if that pitching is still as, as challenging as it was when you started off or, you know what that experience is no. like for you. Thankfully, no. Good. Um, it's yeah. it's not an automatic in. I have a great editor, Noah Eaker at Harper Collins. We've done the last. We did this book, Big Goodbye, the Hollywood book. Um, and Noah is smart about movies. He's mm -hmm. so smart about literature. Um, he gives me a wide leash, um, and he's smarter than I am. Um, and about a lot. So um, I wouldn't want to write a book that Noah wouldn't want me to write. Um, so we have a conversation and he'll say, no, nah, I don't know. That's not, I, I think, go, I think that's not, I think that's too ambitious, not ambitious enough, whatever it may be. And we, we talk until we're both jazzed. Um, and when we are, then we have the conversation with our, you know, my agent has the conversation about the deal. And if we can come to a number that we all like, we're in business. That's great. Um, and also, I, I, I really love the uh, jacket illustration. Thomas Walker, Thank is that the artist? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Did he a also do the big... Like what? A lot of people don't like that jacket cover. It's oh, so I think it's perfect. I mean, honestly, it just shows like he's in the middle of some sort of... Uh, you know, the eye of a, some sort of, it looks like he's almost like in the eye of a storm or like of a, some sort of tornado, which the chaos of a tornado, perfect in a way. That's what I wanted, a tornado dream storm. Um, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. I'm glad you, I'm glad you like it. And did Thomas also do the, no. the last? No, no. Oh, okay. No. No, I forget I the name of the illustrator. That's not neither here nor there. Well, it's there. Um, it's there. <laughs> now, did you get did you get a chance to see the documentary uh, Dark City, uh, Desperate Souls, and the and the Legend of uh, Midnight Cowboy? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I did see that. Yes, it was shortlisted. I don't. It did not make it to the nomination level, sadly. But that 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 was. Um, you know, uh, a, a lovely filmmaker, Nancy Bursky directed that, passed yeah, away. She just died. She just yeah. died. She was like a regular on here. Oh, Adam. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, you know, and, and actually, I think it was probably one of her last interviews because, I mean, it was like uh, the week before, or maybe maybe something like that. Uh, you know, she... We knew each other. I was at a screening of it up 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 in the Hudson Valley where I, I am. It was, um, and uh, yeah, so I just another person very dedicated. She also had done a documentary on Sydney Lumet. So another somebody who's real like besides also making a number of documentaries about stories from the civil rights movement or what have you, human rights and and you know subjects like that. She also had made these two films about that period of time in film history and uh american film history anyway yeah it was a loss yeah um i i i haven't seen her lumet movie i bet that's terrific it is yeah it's really good it's really good um anyway i'm gonna strongly recommend to anybody who's interested i i mean some of my favorite films of course are coppola movies i mean you know it's almost a cliche somebody roughly my age and uh, but I remember being in um, uh, I'd already seen the Godfather movies, but I remember I was traveling on my own, visiting people in the West. Like I was in um, Boulder. Mm. No, I was up in Portland or I think I was in Portland, Oregon, actually visiting people I knew. I was uh, 
18, I think. And I, it was only a few years after Apocalypse came out, but I was afraid of seeing it. I heard such terrifying things about this movie. And, uh, and I was staying with these people I barely knew, some distant relative and her husband, and I was alone in their, their house or what have you. I remember they had a videotape of Apocalypse Now and some crummy TV or something, you know, and I just remember putting it on and it transformed me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Nothing was ever the same again after seeing that movie, you know? It yeah. was, a you lot know, of yeah, 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 it was the, so anyway, this was a great, great read. And, um, thank you, Adam. I, I mean, it's a little intimidating because I, I mean, there's so much I probably would want to talk about, you know, with you if we were just uh, going for a long walk or something, but I want to respect your time and, and, um, and, pre and thank you for making time for, uh, for, for this little Adam, podcast. Thank you for doing what you do. Oh, yeah. Well, my pleasure. Thank you. And we'll do this again, I hope. Again, one last time. Here's the here's the book. Must read for any any f f film lover, any fan of uh, the, you know, everybody loves the Godfather movies. This is a great book. Thanks, Adam, so much. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Until next time. All right. All right. All right. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday out there. You too, pal. In LA. Well. All right. Thank you very much. Bye. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. Thank you.